Hello everybody and welcome back to our discussions in Precalculus. For this video, I am going to talk about inverse functions. And this is actually our last topic in chapter 3, functions. Okay, so if we have f of a equals b, then a function g of x is an inverse of the function f if g of b is equal to a. Okay, that means the input of the function f is now the output of the function g. And the output of the function f is now the input of the function g. So the inverse of f of x is typically notated as f raised to negative 1 of x. This is read as f inverse of x. So this is our notation for inverse function. Okay, f uh, and then raised to negative 1 of x. Okay, that's not actually raised to negative 1. It's just a notation for an inverse function. So, okay, so equivalently f of a is equal to b, then we have the inverse function uh, of b is equal to a. Okay, so what happened here is that the, the input now becomes the output and the output now becomes the input for the inverse function. Okay, so if for a particular function we have f of 2 is equal to 4, what do we know about the inverse? Okay, the, then uh, here we have the input. The input is 2 and the output is 4. Okay, if we are looking for the inverse of this function, then the inverse function, if the, the, in, the input of the inverse function is 4, the output is 2. Okay, that's what we know about the inverse function for this particular function. Okay, so that's it. If we take a look at this one, this illustration, it simply means that the domain, okay, so the domain of the function f becomes the range of the inverse function. Right, and the range of the dom uh, the range of the function f is now the domain of the inverse function. So uh, they exchange, okay, the domain and range exchange when uh, we talk about the inverse function. Okay, so the function f of x equals two raised to x has domain negative infinity to positive infinity and range of zero to infinity. What would be the expected domain and range of the inverse function? Okay, so basically, uh, since the domain of the function is negative infinity to positive infinity, this now becomes the range of the inverse function, and this now becomes the domain of the inverse function. Okay, for the inverse function, okay, domain the domain now is 0 to infinity and the range is the domain of the original function so this is negative infinity to positive infinity okay you see the domain and range just exchange place okay let us take a look at this one so when we are given a graph uh this one g of x is given what is f of g of 3 I, I mean what is g of 3 okay so basically this is the original function right g of 3 so what is the output when the input is 3 so just like what we did in our previous lessons uh, we basically just need to s uh, look at 3, x is equal to 3, take a look at the graph, and take a look at the output, the output is 1. Therefore, g of 3 is equal to 1. Now, as an added uh, problem here, what is the value of the inverse function when the input is 3? Okay, so basically, if we are given a graph of g of x and we are looking for the inverse we are uh, this input value of the inverse 
is actually the input uh, i mean the output value of the original function so we take a look at the graph but this time we take a look at the y axis and when y is equal to 3 x is equal to 5 uh, okay therefore the inverse the value of the inverse function when the input value is equal to 3 is actually equal to 5 okay what we did is actually the reverse right for the first one we take a look at the x value and solve for the y value but for the inverse function we take a look at the y value as the input value and take a look at the x value to be our answer okay so that's it that's how we evaluate the inverse function of a graph if we are given so okay so it is important to note that not all functions will have an inverse function okay since the inverse uh, takes an output of the function f and returns an input of f so in order for the uh, inverse function to itself be a function then each function or output of f must correspond to exactly one input value of the function f okay so an inverse function can only be a function if the original function is a one-to-one -one function okay an inverse function is only uh, it's only applicable to a function that is one-to-one -one. okay so when an original function is not one-to-one -one, it doesn't have an inverse okay so in order for a function to have an inverse, it must be a one-to-one -one function. So let us try to find the inverse of the given function f of x equals 4x minus 3. Before you go and find the inverse of this function, it is but proper and uh, to uh, see to it that the given function is one-to-one -one. okay this function is linear so we do not have any problem because this function is one-to-one -one. okay all linear functions are one-to-one -one. so how, what are the steps in solving for the inverse of the function okay so the first step in solving for the inverse of this function is to write write this as y equals 4x minus 3 Okay, so we have y is equal to 4x minus 3. So we just change f of x with y. Okay, so that doesn't uh, change anything except the notation. Okay, so the next step here is to interchange x and y. Okay, let us interchange x and y. So now we have x is equal to 4y minus 3 then after interchanging x and y we're going to solve for y in terms of x so this becomes 4y is equal to x plus 3 and then we divide both sides by 4 we have y is equal to x plus 3 over 4 therefore the inverse function is this x plus 3 over 4 we can write the inverse function of x equal to x plus 3 over 4 okay now how do we verify our uh, solution okay we can verify by uh, evaluating the composition of function f of g of x Okay. this should be equal to x as well as g of f of x if these two composition of functions are equal to x then our inverse function is indeed the correct inverse function okay so the f of g of x is uh, uh, g of x i mean the inverse function okay so basically this is our g of x here okay in this one 
Okay, so we have four. We just substitute x with the given x, x plus three over four, and then minus three. Okay, four and four will be cancelled, so we have x plus three minus three. So this is equal to x. Okay, for the other one, g of f of x. So we have g of x is x plus three over four. So we have four x minus three. And then plus 3 over 4. So that's uh, minus 3 plus 3 is 0. So we have 4x over 4. And this is equal to x. So they are both equal to x. Therefore, our solution, the inverse function of 4x minus 3 is indeed x plus 3 over 4. Okay. So that's how we solve or to find the inverse of a given one-to-one -one function okay, in case the given function is not one-to-one -one, we can actually uh, restrict the domain of our inverse function so as it does not violate the rule of um, functions okay so that's it for this video i hope you learned something if you have any questions you can comment uh, on this video and please do not forget to subscribe